Okay, so previously we had seen the subset construction and we also seen its lazy counterpart, which is a combination of breadth first search and the subset construction. But I haven't shown you that indeed the subset construction does what is claimed. So we're going to be now proving the correctness of the subset construction. So this is going to be one key element of proving that indeed all NFAs recognize regular languages. So this is one key component of that proof. Right, Miss Kitty? Miss Kitty's hanging out with us. So let DFA D equal to QD sigma delta D. So this is the transition function for a DFA. The subset Q0, remember this is a label for a state? Yeah, exactly, Miss Kitty. I know, I know, right? Be the result, be the result of the subset construction. Be the result of the subset construction applied. applied to NFA N, which is going to be have the set of states being QN. Yeah, it's going to have the same input symbols, Miss Kitty. Then it has a transition function that's for an NFA, QN. It has a start state Q0 without curly braces. It's, it's Q0, F, N. The main claim here is that if we consider these two, it will be the case that the language of D, the DFA, is in fact equal to the language of N, the NFA. Right, Miss Kitty? Right? Yeah, I know. You're just so darn excited about this claim, aren't you? But let's prove this claim together. So you might ask Dan, what's the game plan here? Well. Previously, when we examined DFAs and NFAs, we took advantage of the inductive definition that it has for its computations. And we know the definition of what it means to accept a string with a DFA or an NFA. So why don't we use that inductive definition to help us prove that the languages of these two automata are the same. So we're going to use mathematical induction on the length of the string to achieve this. So we're going to let w be a string over the alphabet. Now, here comes a, 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 an important observation for us to prove this claim using the definition of the language of each of these. Observe that both yeah, Miss Kitty, I know, we're going to get this observation in place. Observe that both D and N accept, accept in the following circumstances. If and only if, if and only if, both delta hat, so we're going to use the extended transition function for the NFA and the DFA. I'm going to label these with N and D respectively for the NFA and DFA. Q0, W. If both this and delta hat D on this state, W, contain a state in Fn. So just remember that even though that's a subset of the states, it's still a state. Likewise, when I consider the state in the DFA, that's still a subset, but when it operates within the DFA, it's a, it's a label. So please note that distinction, but this is still nonetheless true. So if I interpret the, the, the label 
of that state, one of them is going to be in Fn. That's what we want to observe here. So now we actually have the machinery necessary to actually prove this claim. We prove via mathematical induction induction on the length of the string w that the following claim is true. That delta hat on the state q0 or the subset containing only q0 w is equal to delta hat n of q0 w. So what I'm saying is, if you look at this guy with the DFA, it has to equal, so whatever this subset, which would be a label for the DFA, it has to equal whatever is over there for the NFA, which would be a set, a sub, some, uh, some subset of the states. Right, Miss Kitty? So we need to, I need to remind you about how mathematical induction works. So Miss Kitty, you're going to help me do this, okay? So we're going to be applying the principle of mathematical induction. So to do this, I'm going to get Miss Kitty's help, okay? So remember, in the principle of mathematical induction, to use it require, requires us to do two things. First, imagine Miss Kitty is trying to climb up a bunk bed so she can nap in the bed on the top of the bunk bed. I would like to show Miss Kitty how to do this. So one thing I could do is show Miss Kitty some sufficiently first steps of rungs so she gets an idea of how to put herself onto the ladder to get up the bunk bed. So she might start with the first step or potentially the next step and so on, but only, only we, we only want Hassel called our base steps. So we need enough to convince us that there's these small number of cases that for which it will work for our claim. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take Miss Kitty. We're going to put her on two arbitrary rungs. So I'm going to start her on one rung. And in weak induction, what I would do is I would take and show her how to climb up an arbitrary next rung from that step. So it has to follow. So that if I put Miss Kitty on any one of the rungs, she would know how to climb up on an arbitrary rung so that when I put her at the bottom of the ladder, she can climb up the entire ladder up to the bunk bed. So that's what we're going to use mathematical induction for on the length of the string w. So if we can establish this claim for all strings of length 0 and above, we have proven the claim. Because for this to be true, it has to be that this is also true. OK, Miss Kitty? Very thankful. Very thankful for your help. So let's start off with the base step. So this is when the string has length 0. And there's only one string that has length 0, correct? It's just the empty string. Right, Miss Kitty? It is the empty string. So W is the empty string. So now what we do is we pick up the basis parts of the definition. Yes, Miss Kitty, I haven't forgotten. We need to make sure we remember those definitions. But, Miss <laughs> Kitty, you're going crazy at the moment, aren't you? You're really excited about all of this. By the basis of delta hat, so the extended transition function, in either case, notice that delta hat d, so this is for the DFA, So delta hat with Q0, the subset Q0 with epsilon, and delta hat on the NFA for Q0 epsilon, they're going to be the subset only containing N, uh, Q0. Right? If you read nothing, it keeps you in the same state for the NFA which translates naturally to a, the same subset for the DFA. 
So there's our base step. Now that's all we're going to need surprisingly for our case here. We're giving Miss Kitty one rung arbitrarily and we're going to show that it follows that we show her how to get to the next rung from our current rung. But notice that we don't know anything about where we are on the ladder, right? So I can't just simply assert something for that given value. I have to use what we call the induction hypothesis. So fix some n or equal to zero, right? Because we use zero because we prove the claim for when n would be equal to zero. So I want to show you when you get to the next rung that when I prove it for zero and I show you how it follows that one for n is equal to one it holds, then for one it has to hold for two, for two it has to hold for three, and, four, and so on and so on. And that's how we would use the principle of mathematical induction here. Then let the length of w be n plus one, assuming assuming the statement holds. So the statement as in our observation. The statement holds. For all w, all strings of length n. This is our induction hypothesis. So now, just like we've done previously for using induction, this is specifically the inductive part of the definition of these extended transition functions, we're just going to decompose the string into two parts. Consider w is equal to xa, where for a is the last symbol of w. And x would be everything but a, right? <laughs> everything but the last symbol. Well, by the induction hypothesis, what can we say? Well, remember, x has what length? What's the length of x? What's the length of x? It's n. Exactly, Miss Kitty. So that means that we can use it by the induction hypothesis, delta hat of d subset q0 x is equal to delta hat of n q0 x. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use, to take advantage of how we define the extended transition function for the inductive case, we're going to use that here, specifically on the NFA. So that way we could see what states would come out as a result of this side. And let, so this is just from our definition, P1, P2, all the way up to PK, be the set of states. of n for both of these. So I'm just giving it a name. So the result of this is that. So whatever the subset label would be for this, that's this. This would be the literal set of, uh, the literal subset. Well, now let's use the inductive part of the definition, all by the inductive inductive part of the definition of the extended transition function for NFA. What can we say? Well, what we can say is this: the delta hat n. So for the non-deterministic finite automaton, we could say Q0 on Q0 W is going to be the union. Remember, this is all we said was, this is literally in our definition. The union over all of the following. 
So I take each one of the sets, sorry, each one of the states, I read it on that symbol, and I look at all the states of transitions too, I lump them all together. That's what this says, correct? So I'm going to mark this and put the star on this. Right, Miss Kitty? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, now, what are we going to do with this? So watch this. Now there's a nice property that the subset construction actually has. In addition, in addition, a property a property of construction construction is that well what is the what does the subset construction exactly do? Well remember it does something like this that the transition on on this so imagine I give you this label for a subset on A. Now you interpret this as an actual subset. So if I read that on that symbol A, it's that this is actually all of these. This isn't actually terribly scary looking if you actually think about it. So I'm going to label that double star. So what this is saying is that when you read symbol A on this subset, what did we do? Well, for each one of each one of these, I look at this, right? That's what I do for each one of these. That, that's what's happening on the right-hand side. That's exactly what we did in the subset construction. So, how are we going to use these now? Well, watch this. Watch this. So now I have these two to play around with. Since delta hat d q0x is is resulting, it looks like, this subset as that state. Applying the inductive part of the definition of a DFA. Uh, inductive part, the inductive part of the definition of delta hat on a DFA, what can we say? So now that we have all these bits and pieces, I can actually tell you where and what state the DFA will go to. Because now I have something about x. I know what it's going to do. It's going to do something that looks like this. So let's put all the pieces together now. So, delta hat d, suppose I give you the start state on w. Well, by definition of delta, it's delta d of, so I'm using the inductive part of the definition for delta hat. It's delta d, where I apply it on x. Then I have the one symbol, right? But what's this? Well, this right here, we already established is our set P1, P2, all about the PK, right? But remember, that's just a state in the DFA. But what's this? It's right there, right? So now let's start using these. Wow, that's just the union from I is equal to 1 to K of delta of n of p i a so this is by double star right that's double star so this is by double star but what's this what's that 
we had it over there. That was just star, right? So we know that's actually equal to something interesting, right? Well, this is delta hat n q0 w by star, right? thus completing the induction step. Right? So now we have the induction step set up. We've shown how in you append A that we actually can use the definitions from the extended transition functions appropriately. We can actually show that Whatever you get as that label, that subset, is going to be the same one for the NFA, from the DFA. So we start on one side, we gave the other side. Now, what do I have to do? There's one last step. One last step. We have to use the principle of mathematical induction and then now put our statement, the observation that we had, to good use to establish that L of D is equal to L of N, right? We haven't quite done that yet. We need to use the principle of mathematical induction to help us do that. Therefore, therefore, by the principle of mathematical induction, by the principle of mathematical induction, for all strings of length zero or more, delta hat d for q zero w is equal to delta hat n q zero w. Where this is a subset, but it's also a label for the DFA. And as a result, based on our observation at the beginning of the proof. L of D is equal to L of N. Thus completing the proof, demonstrating the correctness of the subset construction.